Hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm EVM and this is the Volvo XC40, a car we're extremely familiar with because we had the plug-in hybrid version for I think nearly three months at the start of the year due to Volvo not being able to pick it back up again uh, with the lockdown. So we're very familiar with the car, but this, this is the full fat battery electric version. It's underneath pretty much the same as a Polestar 2, which gives it a bit for me, a little bit of a split personality. As always, we'll look around the outside, the inside, and then we'll take it on the road to discuss a few details that we've found over the last, well, you can probably tell, we've done about 800 miles in this and it's fly spattered. We've realized it's a very comfortable cruiser, but in terms of its looks, I think it's, uh, it's again, it's a safe bet, it's a Volvo. The only real difference between this and all the other XC40s is, is this blanked out grill, which I don't think I'm a fan of. I think I prefer the proper grill in terms of aesthetics. I'll put a picture up now so you can see what I mean. Uh, and I, I think it'd be better if they just kept that. Blanked it out maybe on the inside or something, but it just looks like someone's gone to Halfords and bought one of those cheap modifications. I don't know. Other than that, it's a standard Volvo. It's quite handsome in SUV world, which, well, I'm never a big fan of SUVs. I don't think there will ever be a good looking one, but it's, it's, it's what I think Volvo owners like. It's uh, unassuming. It'll drive past you on the road, nobody would kind of give it another glance, which again, I think Volvo owners prefer. And when we look around the side, it's pretty much the same there. There are a few nice details. This kind of crease down below and it kind of bulges out. It's the side of an SUV. I don't know what more I could say. It's got a sort of sleekish appearance in a Volvo-esque sort of way. I quite like the panel gaps, which are perfect in every way. So the build quality is definitely there. And this here is the charge port, which is a good and a bad thing because it's quite easy to use. We've used it in many public chargers, but this thing can tow. And if you're towing something, how do you charge the car when the charge port's at the back? You're familiar with these L-shaped sort of rear lights. I do quite like that, if I'm honest, and the way it kind of bulges out of the back. But again, it's just standard SUV, standard Volvo. They all kind of look the same, really. But people don't buy Volvos for looks. They buy them for practicality. And if I waggle my foot under there, and I've got the key on me. I'll go get the key. Where's the key? There we go. As you can see, we're giving it the IKEA test. We'll take it out and show you more in a second, but it's a cavernous boot when you've got the seats down and it's completely flat, which is brilliant. So easy to put stuff in. And when the seats are up, more than big enough for a family. Now we've uh, moved that out of there. Let's show you the boot with the seats up. And I mean, this is more than enough. If you've got baby paraphernalia, and we've all been through it, haven't we? This should be enough. It's not the biggest in the world, but again, I think it should be fine for any kind of two plus two family. And it's quite easy to put the seats down. Just push it like that. I could probably yep, stretch out in this. <laughs> and look, completely flat. That is what a lot of cars are missing out on. Uh, so yeah, thumbs up on the practicality front. Oh, ow, ow, ow. Not so much on my old knees. I'm not sure why more manufacturers don't do this. It's got actual We'll, we'll cut that bit out. Actual storage, quite big actually. Plenty for your cables, everything you need. Just makes the use of some space. And of course, comes with lots of toys because who wants to shut their own boot lid? But there is a slight issue. This particular version, and all the cheapest one you can currently buy, nearly 50,000 pounds. Let's see if the interior matches that. The driver's side's around there. Professionals again. That's a heavy, heavy door, good solid one. Now, this is the steering wheel. It's got nice matte finish. It's not black gloss. Feels nice and sturdy. I would say premium in that one. You've got a few cheap materials here. That feels nice. It's very textured. Can't probably quite tell on camera. Again, that's nice. Good speakers in this one. That's nice and soft. Switch gear, again, typical Volvo. Solid build quality. This feels really nice. These vents. Good resistance, again, excellent quality. This dash bit here, soft, hard wearing, but soft touch. Not the best I've ever seen, but 
I'm happy with that. We'll come back to this in a second, but of course it's surrounded by black gloss, so I'm not a major fan of that one. The screen, nice and easy to see. You can change a few things, but it's not a virtual cockpit in the vague sense. Nice buttons here. Again, typical Volvo build. I love this, little bit cheap. Cup holder, decent size. Does it fit the uh, larger bottle, Harry? Let's have a see. It yes. does. Well, hey, uh, wireless phone charger down there. You've got USB-C charging sockets as well as 12 volt. So all the usual stuff, and that's quite deep actually. It's, bit, it's quite a useful space. Uh, we've done a lot of driving in this, like I said, about eight, 900 miles. And you can just see how filthy and dusty and dirty it's all got. Um, it, 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 this is what it's going to be like in normal day-to-day -day life. Why black gloss in effectively a family car? Uh, under here we have nice lots of bits of storage for your various camera equipment. Nice and deep and if you press this you've got a separate storage bin which you can remove. So it's got a lot of uh, thought putting into the uh, interior for me. It's a reasonable armrest as well if I just zoom out. Uh, you can't adjust it but it seems to fit quite well. Little gear lever Obviously it's back for drive, forward for reverse and park. It's all automatic in terms of the handbrake. The, the, you know, it does it itself when you put it into park. Massive door bin, huge stuff. I mean, you can fit absolutely mountains of sweets and things in that. And how's the glove box? Uh, it's full width at least, but it's not massive. After living with the Volvo V60 for a while, I don't know if you agree, this is a step down it's on that. A step down, yeah. It's not quite as luxurious it's as not, the V60, it's not, no. but it's a it's different a nice class place of car. To be, isn't it? Yeah, it's a different car entirely, isn't it? Seats, Harry? Yeah, really comfy. We've, yep. Like I said, we've driven an awful long way in these. Yep. Uh, no backache. I've never had a backache, any sort of ache at all. No, nope, no. Nope. And the recline all the way back. Uh, I'm not that we've tested that, of course. No, we've just found the back. We've heard about that. <laughs> Now this one has some extras of course, and it's quite well specced, it's a press car, and if you use this touch button here, which is Harry's about to demonstrate, you can get rid of this, which makes it extremely bright and airy in here. Uh, it is a sunroof, that bit opens up as well, but that goes all the way back, it's a panoramic uh, roof. You can't see it in the front, but I think the kids will love it. This is a family car, so should we jump in the back? Let's jump in the back, it's not gonna look odd, is it? Two guys in a... In a near a field with uh, no. You know, by the way, we've just like walkers going past. Right now, as always, this is in a position for a good six footer, a good amount of space. Not the biggest car I've ever been in, but I don't think anyone will complain, even as an adult. Uh, the middle bench is okay. We no do. ice to fix in the middle, and but you do have a hump there, which is getting in the way. It's comfortable. It's nice and practical in the back, yeah. and it's what, everything you'd expect from a Volvo XC40, that's the dash. And I have to say, it's not the most exciting, but it is very good and practical. Now we said it does have a few issues. One is this, the media. It, it's, it's uses Google Android, doesn't it? The, uh, the same one as a Polestar. It, it's underpowered. It's like, yeah, it's like they've got a processor from an old Nokia phone, isn't it? it yeah. it's, it's like dial-up. And when you try and kind of spin it, it, it does it, but- It doesn't want to. Not how you'd expect it to, and if you're driving, so it's just you by yourself, it's unusual. You'd have to pull over. You'd have over. to pull over, wouldn't you? Yeah. And it's the same with that there, the one in the uh, centre. If you're using it for sat nav, it, it gets graphic artifacts all, almost. Yeah, I don't yeah. know what to call them really, all the time. And it's like it's flashing. So it's like it can't render it quick enough. Yeah, yeah. And it, 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 it distracts you because you think that something's popping up on the dash. You're like, oh, what does the car want me to know? Oh, no, it's just that. And it's, it it's, does flicker though, doesn't it? The yeah. first few times, I felt like an engine, an, an, you know, a light would come on, like an engine management That's light. That's what or I mean. Like so that. it's it's the entertainment system is very good. It's just it, it's underpowered. It just needs a, yeah more memory and <laughs> a better yeah. a better processor, and I'm sure it'll be fine. Well, it's not great, is it? No, it really isn't. And, and again, the, the inputting of information into it, it's no iDrive, is it? It's, it's you've got to pull over, really, haven't you? Yeah. Do what you need to do with it. And then get off. You do. I mean, that's... Incl including the uh, changing of like you know the heated seat or the uh, temperature. There are too many button presses, and they're quite small. So, shall, shall I give you a challenge? Go for it. I challenge you to change it from speed limiter to the uh, assist or cruise ah, control, well, basically. You would think it'd just be as easy as pressing this button next to the icon that selects it. What, like you do in the Volvo V60 and all other Volvo? Like you do. Oh, but it doesn't do that. No. Nope. No, that's not been programmed in. So instead, have I got to click, got to keep my eye on the road and yep. finger on there, click a cog. And then you click, click driving, driving whilst doing 70 miles an hour on the yep. motorway. And then go to 
pilot, pilot assist. assist. Yep, there we go. And, and now then, we're, there yeah. we go. And yeah. then we've got to go back again to the map and yeah, yeah, it's a bit messy that when you could just press a button. This is what annoys me about some cars. That is a software fix. Well, yeah. it's, not, it's not. It's not like I have to re-engineer anything. But other than that, to drive, it's pretty, pretty it's not, comfortable. It's, isn't it? it's as you'd expect, isn't it? There's yeah. no, there's no surprises in the comfort, mm -mm. Uh, the steering, the amount of space in the back. Yep. Yeah, but there is a, a bit of, as we said earlier, split personality. Yeah, it's a Jekyll and Hyde. It is completely weird, isn't it? Uh, and that is the fact that this has over, just over, four hundred brake horsepower and well over 600 newton meters of torque. There's not many vehicles, is there, that no, would no. beat this? Off the line. I mean, a Golf R would probably not, would it, to 50, 60, well, this, this is quicker. A Golf R, you'd have to be ready, wouldn't you? You'd have to either be yeah. brake boosting launch or mode. launch control. Yeah. Yep, with this, you just go. <laughs> I mean, you saw the sunglasses <laughs> go flying back then. But that's not a, a bad thing, is it? I mean, I quite like Powerful you know, cars, but in this, it's hilarious. <laughs> I keep wondering when that's going to get boring, and so far it hasn't. We were both driving, weren't we, in different cars back from work today, and yeah, I was yeah. in this one. Uh, and then it went to a de restricted area. I just put my foot down, and then what did it look like from the outside for an XC40 to just go bang? It looked like someone had catapulted it. <laughs> it, did, it, just, it, looked, it didn't look natural. 4.7 seconds to 60. It weighs nearly 2.2 tons. It shouldn't do it. It, no, it shouldn't do it, but it does. So some people might think, oh, that's, that's a bit of fun. It's a bit of a laugh. Yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a talking point, but the, the handling it doesn't match it. The brakes certainly don't. No, match no, no. It. Which is probably why they've got the Polestar 2 with the... Yeah, but why then make it a £50,000, 400 brake horsepower, all-wheel drive car? Because it's all... Because they, because they can, can just take... Well, I think because the kits are there for a Polestar 2. So what, what I'm thinking really is that as they have done with the Polestar 2, they must be bringing a... A front wheel drive only version this well, with a I think front, yeah front wheel drive with 200 250 brake yep smaller battery probably yeah it would be it's got to be the sweet spot nobody I mean I can't imagine people taking the kids to school want to do it yeah you know at that speed little Tarquin will be able to have an extra round of toast because and get get to school that much quicker <laughs> uh, have a facelift on the way <laughs> yeah. I can't uh, imagine many uh, hot hatch fans are getting one of these well no, I can't imagine someone's going well could get the RS3 or oh, the this. XC40. <laughs> yeah. It's so I don't know what to think about that because part of me thinks why not, but then I think you know the 40 grand version. Guessing now, would going to suit more people. Yeah, with less power and less battery is probably going to be the one I would I, go for. I think it's I think it's brilliant because it's absurd. Yeah, it is absurd. Is probably the best way. Yeah. Of, of describing it actually, isn't it? Uh, and I think when it comes to the range. The weight then does it does have an effect, doesn't it? Well, it's like they've put more weight in it to make it go further because yeah. it weighs a lot. We want it to do this much. Just keep putting batteries in until, until we get it to does that weigh range. Until it does weigh it does. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so on our long jaunt, I mean, bear in mind that the weather is uh, almost optimum for batteries at the moment, so it's it's a good time. We got doing proper motorway speeds. Didn't yeah, we? yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, seventy because that is the speed limit. All well, the way down to rugby. 60 on most of the bloody M1. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, but we, we got about 210, 220. We did, yeah. And that's just constant motorway. Not We didn't stop no traffic for a good couple of hundred miles. So I would say you would definitely get 230, 40 in Easily. this. Easily. As an average. But then knock about uh, 30 of that off, maybe 40, yeah, yeah. if it was the middle of winter. Well, there we go again. See what I mean? <laughs> you can't film anything in this car because it's so ridiculous. <laughs> But funny at the same time, when you push it, especially on anything with a twisty road or even just a vague corner in it, I am not. I don't feel comfortable. No, no. It's too quick, and I never thought I'd say that about a car. It's almost like a, do you remember, max power generation? Oh, yeah, yeah. Which is, quite frankly, our, our generation. generation. What have you done to the uh, car then? Oh, I put a massive turbo on it. Okay. Suspension? No, I don't need nah. to do that. Brakes? Nah. nah. Just I'll a talk. massive turbo. Massive turbo. And that's almost what this is. <laughs> yeah, it's like someone's remapped a car yeah. with a giant turbo on it and done nothing else to it. It's XC40 max power. It is, yeah. Yeah. Just a, another thing uh, worth mentioning is the road noise in here. Yes, actually, on the motorway, there was a lot more road noise than, uh, well, the V60. Then you would expect in an electric car. Yeah, but it's we, tire noise, we do think. think that's the tyres they put on them. Yeah. Oh, <coughs> did a bit of rendering then. Yeah, it does it all the time, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. And, and because it's flashing, I mean, it's getting a it bit It draws twilight. your attention to it. It does, yeah. And, and when you, it's distracting, which is it's the opposite of what Volvo are known for, <laughs> yeah. safety. 
There is a question. Polestar 2 or this? Because they're basically the same car, but quite different Do you know, personality. I've been, I've been running this through my mind all day. Uh, it's close, mm. it's close, but I'd have this. You go for this? Yeah, I think it's, I think, it, strangely enough, I think it's more bonkers than the Polestar 2. Because you expect that performance. It's got this sleeper thing, and also I, I, I prefer um, the, just the size of this, the fact it's not got a you know small rear. The, it's trying, it's, it's a compromise. Like, yeah, it's a, it, it, yeah, yeah, perfect, it's a compromise. However though, I think I would go for the Polestar 2. Would you know? Because well, I would feel more special in that. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's got... Uh, it looks better. It's a badge thing. It's a snobbery, badge snobbery thing. I think people will go, ooh, that's nice. Whereas this, they wouldn't even look at it. But if I had a very young child or children, I would go for this. Oh, you're going to get bikes and all sorts in the yeah, back of this one. This window, is a better family car, so I guess it depends on your circumstance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So if you're carrying anything in the back... Don't accelerate. Don't accelerate. Because... The uh, basic physics. <laughs> Do you think anyone's wondering why we're doing this review at twilight? No, I think they just think that's the natural time that we do reviews. <laughs> it's, uh, well, necessity it's because... the time we have. Yeah, all the, re all the recording we did at Fully Charged didn't work. No, <laughs> no. Anyway, should we talk about anyway, the towing? Yeah, let's talk about the towing. Because yeah. it is a thing, isn't it, that this could do, which is a very good thing. Yeah. 1,500 kilograms. That's a lot. For a Bev, that's yeah. an awful What's lot. What's the combined weight then? Is it 3.7 tonne? Um, but, as we pointed out earlier, you can't charge and tow. You, no, it's not happening, is it? It's so, not happening. What, 100 mile range roughly, if you're towing something heavy. That heavy, yeah. Because it does have a bigger effect on any car, not just electric. Um, so you're going to have to, what, unhitch or somehow go well, it sideways? it does beg the question, doesn't it? If you, if you went sideways and blocked, well, you blocked, what, three or four at least charge points? And parking bays. Yeah, you're going to have a lot of... Uh, well, they're not going to be pleased with you, people. are they? Yeah. I mean, they're... Inconsiderate. Ionity and things like that do have some sideways kind of yeah, bays. Yeah. Towing for me with EVs is an afterthought, isn't it? Uh, if you're going to tow yeah. a lot, then I think probably, dare I say, a fev is probably the best thing for you at the moment. If we assume they're going to do a cheaper front wheel drive, as they have with the Polestar it 2. It would make sense. 40 to 50, well no, 40 and then beyond 50 uh, with options. What's it competing against in electric car world? Well, I, the obvious thing is uh, Tesla. It's convinced with Model, Model Y? Well, yeah, well, Model Y, yeah, I suppose, yeah, yeah. When it's out. When it's out, yeah. Model um, 3 for the time being. Quite different, but yeah. Uh, and then you've got the Ionic 5. Yep. EV6. Yep. Mustang Mach-E. Yeah, it's an like SUV that goes drive similar, one, yeah, but similar price bracket. ID4, although uh, that's, a bit, yeah. that's cheaper. It, yeah, in here it's probably a bit too small to compare to this. It is. Um, so basically, there's a, a, lot, there's of a lot of competition. Yeah. An awful lot. I, I, I don't know where to put Pigeon on this or who would buy it. I guess the traditional Volvo owner that wants a battery car, a you know, full electric vehicle. And happens to have 50 grand to spend. <laughs> well, yeah. Oh, I know what I want in this. What's that? An adjustable. With paddles or with the gear stick, B mode. Yeah, that would be lovely. It does one pedal driving and it works as one pedal driving. It's a bit much. But it's fierce. Yeah. So you've got literally no regen at all, as in, you know, as in when you take your accelerator, right, you have to press the brake pedal, or you've got full on regen. Rip your face off. Yes. I always think for me, when it's a software thing, why don't they have, like, they, you know, if you've got volume, why don't they have regen and you can just yeah. drag it up and down? <laughs> 10 regen settings. Yeah. We've had to revert to the camera because, as you probably tell, the light was fading. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, if there's any proof that YouTube is for amateurs, I think you sat right in front of us. Right yeah. Now. I think this is a car that is bonkers. It is. Practical. Yep. Uh, well made. Very well made. Phenomenally well made, actually. Comfortable. Did I say comfortable? Comfortable. Um, and. Swedish. Uh, yeah. But I still wouldn't get one myself. Just because the XC40 isn't a 50, will never be a, no, a, no, a 50,000 no. pound car. You know, like when you get... Um, it's not It's not like a 3 Series and they bring out the M3 and it's Where they've separated. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it, 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 do you know, like when you get a house yeah, yeah. and there's a ceiling price? This is exactly it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's like somebody's stuck a, a massive extension on a swimming pool and the estate agent comes up and goes, Stuck. I'm sorry, you're still here. Yeah. It's still just a house in this in this Even area. Even though you put all this extra money into it, you're not going to get all that out. 
yeah, and, and that's what I keep on coming back to, which is why, as a 40 grand car, I think this is very, very, very good. good. Value, yeah. um, so maybe, if there's discounts on this, yeah, you know, yeah. we're, we're, we're quoting list prices. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so or a, low, or a lower powered model. Or a lower power model that Eventually. hopefully will be cheaper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so at the moment, if you want to buy a Volvo XC40, buy the all wheel uh, front wheel drive Polestar 2. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Thank you for watching. Now, members saw this video a week early. Go to ev-man.co.uk if you want to find out more details. And we want you in the comment section to tell us which you'd go for, the XC40 or the Polestar 2. Uh, so anyway, thank you for watching, guys. Uh, we'll see you soon. Right, well, thank God for that. I'm absolutely oh, bloody knackered. Time is it, anyway? I don't know. <laughs> Hang on a minute. It's a 12-hour day. <laughs>